put your butt back in a chair, it reduces the double chin. Did you know that? <laughs> Big time. <laughs> like that. It's awesome. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> um, TV tips with DASA. And so uh, you, after, now after this um, technical malfunction break, uh, we have learned more about doing class online with Google Hangouts. And we're going to continue with Brendan and his napkins to launch, literally napkins to launch project. And the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to screen share. I'm going to go like that, go like that, right? Present to everyone, bang. Let's just make sure this is working. So when I go here, yep, great. So don't touch this, or better yet, I'll minimize it. Okay. Great. There you go. Okay. But room is fine. Yes. Yeah, less than. Oh, all right. So, um, due to technical difficulties, I'll wrap this up in a bit. Okay. But the the, the point here is that um, where was I in all this? Um, well, basically what's going to happen is that there's going to be uh, a whole lot of contracts that are going to be generated and that's going to create uh, essentially a whole new domain of law for, for all of these uh, contracts. And um, let's see, I'll just skip through this. Well, we'll, we'll wrap it up there. All right. <laughs> sure. Yeah, yeah. We want to take like 30 seconds to just do a summary. Well, well the, the, the summary... I think it's pretty clear, and generally speaking, the summary is that the public sector and the government is um, just way too inefficient, and the uh, reorganize, reorganizing and uh, re-engineering um, with some uh, capital uh, from the private sector and the methodologies from the private sector would go a long way to uh, making things just uh, a lot more beautiful for all of us. Thanks. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Also, a very clever name. There's a blockchain. Awesome. Um, thank you very much, Brendan. Up next, we have um, Natasha here in person. Um, and some of her team, and Chinda's in per here in person too. You could come. Yeah, yeah, come, yeah. come, come. come. We'll, we'll get it on the chair. Um, and her team, who's going to be joining virtually, so we're going to take a moment and get um, the rest of the team up on a hangout. Uh, but this next project is called Hotel Blockchain. So let's get that going. Okay, this should be easier, right? I think I'm doing it right so far. Yeah. Okay. Join. Great. Um, somebody watching online by any chance? Um, I'm not, but I could be. I think. Yeah. Just want to make sure that everything's going smoothly before I kind of click the button. <laughs> right. So I just posted the new link in the, the general or the blockchain projects channel. Oh, so you put a new, did you put a new link in Slack? Yeah. Can you see this one? Do you want me to just, um, oh, no, um, I think it's in the general channel. Okay. Oh, general, okay. I saw it happen, sorry. This one? Yeah. Which at the end of this? I wish Jazz I don't know. Thanks. Yeah. Okay, yes. Oh, yes, yeah, that's right. right. Awesome. Okay. Well, okay. That, that screen is what's being projected on the table. That's fine. That is okay for now. Um, but we want to.
Okay. okay. Great. So I would say don't stop broadcasting what I usually do here. There's all sorts of ways to get that one. So now let's. Don't. Oh yeah, you can do that if you want. Just continue broadcasting. You can also do that. Okay, everybody, and we're going to start the five minute practice pitch for Hotel Blockchain. Great. And everybody ready? Ready. Okay. And we're live. Okay, yes. great. Hi, everybody. Um, my name Oh, dear. Okay. Okay, so my name is Natasha, and I have uh, Inkinga here. He's one of my team mem uh, members. We also have uh, online Connor, hopefully, and Johnny and Natarajan, uh, all of the team members. I happen to be from the Sloan, from MIT Sloan Business School, so apologies for the non technical background, but the rest of the team members are like totally much smarter than me, so that's, that's cool. But my background is in the hotel business, so that's what I know. Um, in the hotel business, hotel business is actually very similar to blockchain in that it's totally decentralized and it's built on trust, so actually the technology and the business is a very, very good fit from a business standpoint. Oh, gosh, what did, I know, where did that go? I did. This is like does a screen. Let's check it out here. Okay. Yeah, go for it. Go for it. Is it not working? No, no. I just, I just. Uh, it's oh, a, I it's, a, it du it's a dual screen thing. Anyone check it? No, it's actually yet another stupid thing. Oh, of course it's it is. Multiple. Yes, multiple. Okay. Yeah. Great. Uh, let's find the mouse. Okay. So let me give a really super quick two uh, two slides on the economics. 
So from the moment people uh, think about traveling and they do research and they book something and they actually arrive and then they pay and then they depart, there are many, many, many uh, people, and I listed them over here on the right, search engine aggregators, booking engine, Airbnb, and all these other people who are basically part of that transaction. And there's actually a lot of people, when you pay $200 for a hotel room, there's actually a lot of people are getting some piece of that value. It's not just between you and the hotel that you're staying at. Actually, hotel that you're staying at is getting probably the smallest portion of the whole overall pie. So the blockchain technology has, is a very good fit to kind of help revolutionize, revolutionize and streamline that economic process. In addition to that, what's really kind of like super cool is that the economists are projecting the international travel to grow really fast over the next 10 years with majority of that growth coming from Asia and from Europe. So there's going to be a lot more people traveling to a lot more countries, utilizing a lot more currencies. And right now, those transactions are very complicated, very opaque. There's a lot of unexpected uh, expenses for everybody. Um, so it's kind of like a perfect industry ripe for re revolutionization. It's not a, a word I don't know. Okay, so, um, so uh, enter as hotel blockchain. So for the travelers, very simply, we'll basically get, um, give them the ability to book with hotels direct, hotels directly <coughs> by removing the middleman, pay in the currency that they want, digital currency or traditional fiat currency, and actually link their own accounts and their own bank accounts or their digital currency accounts to pay for these transactions. And for hoteliers, well, they also benefit from the elimination of the middleman. Uh, so let's think of our traveler as a Jenny. She's a young professional. She's planning to go on an international uh, trip with multiple destinations with her friends. She's worried about the budget and she really wants to kind of go to places she can trust. Um, so she starts looking for a hotel room. This is hotelblockchain.com, actually powered by RoomKey. RoomKey is a search and booking engine that's already built by hoteliers, so we're not reinventing that. Um, but what we're giving her um, ability to do is she can buy points from all these different hotel groups, and she can use you know, digital currency or regular currency to buy it. Uh, she can track her expenses, and basically she has that wallet that's kind of like a hybrid wallet of traditional and the digital currencies together. Um, and then once she finds a better price, because when you buy with points, it's the cheapest transaction you can get. When you get a better price, um, you can see here that she can pay either with fiat or with ether, and then Bitcoin. So in this particular case, uh, she can also track expenses. So in tracking her <coughs> expenses, she can use, in this case, she set up the US dollars, her home currency, but she can also track her expenses in Bitcoin or Ether if she chooses to do that. She can see how much she spent in the past and more importantly, how much she's about to spend. She can find the best deals and the cheapest hotels in the most trusted. So that pretty much concludes um, that part of the presentation. So let's see if we can go ahead. Now uh, comes the real demo. Uh, what do you need? Uh, we'll talk about that. This Just so, so make sure to put the cursor off the right side of the screen. And yep. that's yeah. how you can first of all touch this and you probably invoke the URL from there. Uh, I'd be happy to. Yeah. yeah, and this is the weirdest thing ever. So Google made up a new way to think HTML works. So click the top one or bottom one? Top one. Top okay, one. so you click it and then your work has just begun. Then you navigate to this and then you click this and then and only then can you be happy. Yeah. So this is um, an we we need to implement a mock-up that Johnny did, and so um, this will be uh, what RoomKey site will look like after an integration with Hotel Blockchain. Um, and so there is addition of uh, a wallet where you can choose between fiat and ether um, for paying for your um, for your reservation. Um, you select an account, um, you log in or sign up, and so mockups aren't finished for each of those two modals. 
Um, but the idea with the account is that your a persona will be stored on the blockchain containing um, information about your name and which hotels um, you have loyalty points with and the amount of like loyalty tokens you have. And so then after you fill in some information, we'll do search as provided by RoomKey. And so we're not going to re-implement that. And then I'll take you to a page, and I'll, you'll see some terms about um, about your agreement with Hotel Blockchain and the de details of your reservation, so you can confirm, and then you can confirm pay. Okay. okay. And uh, I think that's probably all the time we have. Thank you very much. There, nice one. You too. That was great. So let's get some some feedback. Yeah. Um, what did you see? What did you hear? What did you feel? That's what I, these guys need to hear. I loved it. I would be more curious if you guys could put a harder point on which exact middleman you're cutting out, because mm -hmm. by one measure it seems like you're just another intermediary. But then, as the presentation went further, I understood. Oh, I see. They're cutting out a lot of like. The Sounds like the money handlers by using in the, in the digital currencies. Um, and I wonder how much of the total transaction costs that shaves off. This is flip side of the same question. How much value do you catch by cutting out that group of middlemen? Yes. Good. Good question. I will uh, research that. The answer is in the hands, which is typical in my team. Um, yeah, that is the, yeah, that yes. That's great. So, and we have to document also, I think, that now the lawyer. Um, asked a question to which the business person said it depends in a remarkable <laughs> flip of roles. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, we have now achieved trilingual. trilingual. <laughs> um, okay. actually, you know, I want to go next. I guess I saw something similar here, which is like, you know, it's brutal to put some, so much in so little time in five minutes. And in your experience in the industry, and there was a great deal on the slides of Brooklyn in the last, over the last week that was really going to the market, the business architecture, the players, and the business model and value chain stuff. And while you may not have a specific answer valuation of how much money you're saving specifically, you could at least look at and address those as you're see, like, oh, yes, these are going to identify those opportunities for savings and revenue here. And so that's my basic sense along the lines of that. I didn't have such a crisp question, but I felt like. This would benefit from taking a little bit out, like at some of the salt pepper things up the thing is cute and good, but you can save 30 seconds on that, 20 seconds at least. Yeah. A, a really good thing would be bring some of the architectural rendering to the, to the marketplace back. So I was wondering, is the audience going to be more tech? Like, I'm really debating. Should we spend more time showing smart contracts in no, Ethereum? No. Or more time on what do you think, business Alan? value chain? I don't think so. I think you need to. When I, when I tell people, and I see students here, actually, how to present, look at his Steve Jobs presentation, right? Ooh. Steve Jobs, right? Okay. He was the best at Here's why this matters to you. Here's what you should care about, right? The blockchain is the implementation detail in this scenario, right? Um, it's not the reason why this thing. You're using this infrastructure to cut out these minimum, like, like, like he was saying, make a smoother, better process, yeah. I think, since I had to floor it out. Um, yeah. Your secret sauce is, is that it doesn't matter what currency. First of all, I don't think even the, nobody's gonna pay for a hotel either, right? That's probably never gonna really happen, right? I think your thing is like, like we talked about before, like your previous thing, like right? these coins, right? Whatever this currency that you develop, right? Because if somebody has a fiat currency and they have hotel points, right? That's how they're gonna That's pay. All they need, yeah. That's all they need, right? All the kind of like um, conversion between ether to fiat to your coin. That's all in the background, right? Nobody needs to know. If it one day becomes popular, you just mm -hmm. move it on. Well, like I said before, right? Like, you can buy and sell, convert, right? Like, you may have some Starbucks points. I convert those into your coin thing so I can pay for my hotel, right? Okay. But I think that's your secret sauce, right? right. Did you get, what do you think about that? I, I'm Maybe take it on board and think about it. So I have another, I'd like to say something on that too. And the, qu the question was, well, okay, to me, the question is, you, I guess you actually asked who was the audience. And so to me, it got, like Steve Jobs, you know, he didn't have one presentation. He had his presentation on stage for a big thing. He had a presentation to investors. He had a presentation to government. Yeah, actually, that's, actually, that's actually not true. Isn't it true? Actually, no, not at all. 
Oh, is that I'm a little C Jazz historian. Right? Yeah, well, you might know more about this than me, I guess. If you, if you look at like the, a good example is like the the iPod presentation. Yeah, thousand songs in your pocket. That's the catchphrase, right? That's yep. the thing. Right? How do yeah. you distill? If you say it's a hard drive in yeah. a box, right? But what, what, what I'm worried about mm -hmm. is, is mm -hmm. what's going to be mm -hmm. seventy percent of the audience of the folks that really love the Ethereum platform, smart contracts, yep. and when we implement that, I'm giving them something. If people don't know yet how to connect that, well, how does that translate? And, and, and I totally disagree. That's my concern. Yep. So this is this is where I was headed with it. Um, and so perhaps Steve Jobs had a different approach. But basically, um, to me, the question of what the audience is is yes. a good one. And it could, it's a, I'll say actually, I'll tell you people online because this is really I'm talking about you. We're talking about you. Um, basically, <laughs> like uh, uh, the audience here is going to be, um, among other things, people in the room. So I think we'll be chock full of people and we need to get people in other rooms watching it. Uh, that's good. Um, but in a sense, they don't matter. I'm sorry to put it that way. They do matter. Like, you know, many of them are your spouses and friends. But they don't um, because they're here. They're just happy to sit in this room today. You're not, these are not people judging you. They're not going to say you get a 100K for winning or not or anything. They're in the room and you should be good at presenting to the people in the room. The people online also are very important, but in a sense, they don't fully matter. In your case, um, if you if you said that you were going to finish this right now, you're never going to do anything else, it's just an IP project, actually, you might then say your success metric is how good was my demo to the people that showed up. And then we'd want to really, I would show you all the meetup and all the event, right? We would really get, like, segment them and understand what would be delightful to them and, like, we'd measure it, and you'd know how you did. In your case, I think your audience are people of the future. And these are the people that you, you definitely want to test this next semester, it sounds. And I don't want to yeah. too much for you, but you know, I think it's safe to say that this looks good. This could be your business, or this could roll up into a business that you have yeah. done. Okay, so I believe that the most important audience here is going to be people who are not yet aware that you or this exists, um, but who will become aware, like as early as next semester in Sandy's class and elsewhere, and that you will, among other things in your portfolio, link to, and you might even roll the clip um, when you're sitting with them or on the phone or, in a, or in, a, in, a, in a press packet or a marketing kit and say, here's the initial presentation that I did from the class at MIT. And then you say, this is what the way you said. And then and here's what I'm asking you to fund now. Here's where we're at. And then you'll say other stuff that time. So I'd say the, the right thing to do here is to create the right genesis story. Uh, to like encapsulate, describe the idea that let enduring value for what you're attempting to do with it. Okay. Um, so you're kind of playing on two levels. Yeah. One is totally the people in the room, like, um, and speak there, but then be even better than that, which you can be. And then also make sure that you've created a time capsule and that you can look back to it. It will be very reusable within the slightly Got different it. context of like, this is how it started. Okay. I, I, I fully agree with that. And I, that, that. And I guess the last thing I'll say, the thing was like, what advantage does Ethereum like, give you that differentiates you from every other thing? Like, mm -hmm. and, and I think that's a, that's a big part Steve. of the story, right? Is there a Q&A portion? Yeah. Um, let's figure that out right now, actually. The, I would leave all the technical questions mm -hmm. to the Q&A. And I'd even ask one or two people to, you know, because when you say any questions, most people are like, uh -huh. and so you get one or two people to say, What's this got to do with watching? And then you did. So you want a ringer? Is that what you're no, saying? We can do that actually. Um, Why so not? I we haven't. I'll ask the question. What's this got to do with watching? And that's what you say. Oh, this is what it means. This brings. Either, okay. either, way, either way, right? Whether you, it's in your presentation or whether the Q and A, you're right. Most of these places do have. Like, they do. Know. So, I, so we've designed for this. Okay. Um, and so what we have going, and actually, Steve is a good example. Um, is we have some really wonderful people that will come and like on stage. Um, they'll get, we'll want them to have the first opportunity to give feedback and ask questions, and, and then I want to open up to everybody. Um, to, to the extent that we, and so who is this for? It's not for me, um, it's not for the people we've invited to do it, it's actually for you. Um, and so it's completely legit, and like I'm saying it on broadcast now, but like to, to have some of those questions in advance. Um, and so Steve is actually on the panel, he's graduated, he's done with this project now. Um, he's ascended to be an analyst. And so they're asking questions. Well, but guess what? So it's a kind of your job. An and one of us needs to ask on the panel first. Right. Why don't we just say that you know when it comes time for hotel watching, first question, Steve, and you'll bring up a technical thing, which is really your role anyway. Right. So that's it's so that's and so it's not, a, it's not a total secret. I'm not trying to no. you know fool anyone. I think technical questions, you know, are best done not 
Right. So maybe Stephen and, and Shinda might want to chat a little bit. So you actually have an opportunity now that you know you know the future. <laughs> um, why don't you work backwards and engineer your presentation from that? So you'll show something, or or Natasha, or you'll show something in five minutes. Can't show much, but now you have a second bite at the apple that you can actually program for. And so whatever it is Steve's going to ask, you can know he's going to ask it. You not only know what you're going to say, you could actually like whip this tie up, or you could actually say, well, let's go back to slide three. Or let's like actually like in extra innings we have like in the appendix slides you didn't see the exact answer to what you're asking or whatever. I'm just saying you could figure out with Steve in advance. Please talk to Steve in advance. Find out what he's going to ask. Work it out in a good way so that you can nail the question, the answer. Acknowledged. The other no, thing no, 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 no and how this gets put together via the blockchain, via Ethereum. Yeah. Yes, that's be, right. You can say a lot in that slide. You don't have to go into detail and anything about it. Yeah. You, know. you can, yeah, I love those slides. That's now almost always my go-to in questions afterwards. There's something people are asking where it's like, I want the architecture, I can't like point at that and say, it's having said that, like, um, yeah. the other thing is implied in all things, but I'll make it explicit. Like, if what I'm saying doesn't make sense, or you have to want to do it your own way, just do that, like, just be your best chinda. But I'm just suggesting a way that you could do it. Okay. All right. So what's next? Transition. Into oh, transition. Change. Let's see if we can replicate the error. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Are you ready? Let's see. Are we ready? You cleaned up. Huh? What'd you do? Got a got a thing thing? Uh, I. That's really good. Okay. So do we have? Do we have a? Do we have your tab? Do we have a tab for you guys? Um. So no. It's it's all on the MIT blockchain legal. We handle. I can't see because of the glare. <laughs> Wait, that's hotel. No, no, keep going left. Oh, we do have a tab. It's the answer. Oh, no. Oh, it's indirect. But it's, it's indirect that we have a tab. Okay. Slide down, X and change. Just one. There we go. Exactly. Okay. So I think, I think it's a bit of a You just have a check thing. It's you know, tiny, but like, we're speeding in 20 seconds. Like, that's not actually. So let's just add to like one to have the tab. Before it even starts. On the on the oh, it is already? Oh, God, you're great. Okay. Oh, yeah, I'll say. Um, so now this is it. And now, okay, so do you guys want to start with seeing your beautiful faces or just go right into the slides? And by, by the way, just for right now, we'll have to figure this out for Thursday. But like, we're broadcasting from here. Very likely, the best thing to do is whoever's speaking, and we can have two, we'll be probably having like a, a, a lab so you don't have to do microphone management. Um, and so, like, you'll have a lab right now. You just sit here. You can be heard from here. Oh, okay. So you want me to sit right there? I think so. And, yeah, that's what we're you know. Um, and then, and we'll, as you yeah, as you change the slides over okay. here, you magiciously can. Do, 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 do. Boom. So this format is the same setup as Thursday. So far, um, and we plan that we'll find improvements to this. Um, but this we're trying to replicate. Thursday night now, and then Thursday during two to four, we're gonna try to have like a dress rehearsal. Okay. Um, they make it be really great. Okay. Okay. Sixth floor. Yeah, sixth floor. I'm gonna to to see if I can get that. Okay. So, so do you? Yep. We're broadcasting. But we haven't yet started. There's five minutes yet. Oh wait. So they're not in a different hangout. Yeah. Are we still streaming? We are streaming. So you know what's possible for this? I'm thinking. What? Is it not? Well, hold on. Let me just. Oh, I think I see the problem. Maybe, maybe I've replicated it now. So did did I just kill the broadcast? Um. So right now it's not on. Okay. Okay. All right. So. And I can hear. All right. Um, present to everyone. So, hold on. How about now? Are you are you seeing a, like a humongous space? Are we good? Hello, hello. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, and there's like a twenty second lag there, and that's. It. Good. Okay. So, do you guys want to start with like seeing you guys, or start with like your? We're slides? right here. I mean, you don't need to see us. We're happy to do the slides. Okay. Great. Yeah. 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 You, you don't need to see us at all. Right on. Um, 
So your slide. So when we hand it to you, and maybe this will be for everybody. We'll hand it to you when you stand, when you go there. It'll be on your first slide broadcasting. Um, who, now, who's doing timing? Who's doing five minutes? This is my problem. Part of what we're doing here is practicing for MIT 100K, which is on Wednesday. So we're very honored to have this as a, a dry run. Yeah, that's nice. Tomorrow. Thanks. Used to be 10k and 50k. It's, it's, it's not on the topic. It's a lot of money floating around. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah. So here's one thing to make it really confusing. Is like, we, okay, there we go. So it's just like, do do. Okay, so I just do do. Do So your attention, please. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Um, we are XM Chain. And as I said, just to contextualize, our audience on next Wednesday is going to be um, not necessarily blockchain people. So although that fits the advice that the gentleman over here gave earlier, we're not going to delve too deeply into those topics. So we're XM Chain. Um, we are an international trade finance platform um, trying to bring trade finance services into the 21st century. Today's trade finance services, as you can see by this very complex and hectic diagram, is overexpensive, inefficient, dominated by banks, and it's really uh, a bad situation, particularly for the small to medium-sized enterprise importers and exporters of the world. So when you're a Fortune 500 company like the left side of the pie, it's really okay to spend a huge amount of money per transaction and also to like hire a whole bunch of experts to run your transactions. But when you're a small to medium-sized enterprise, you don't have the luxury to uh, to, to, to you know the resources to use key banking services and the two key banking services here that that we're going to focus on are first payment settlement services those are used to secure a trade reduce risk for both importer and exporter and then the second service is access to a loan working uh, working capital financing so XM chain initially is going to focus on the first of these two problems that is payment settlement services sort of like clear Banks uh, make about $39 billion a year off of a particular <coughs> instrument called a letter of credit. Now, a letter of credit is basically where banks shuffle around a lot of paperwork to uh, make sure that goods and money flow at the exact same time. So reducing risk or eliminating risk for both sides. Um, and this process hasn't been innovated on for like since the 70s and is extremely complicated. Again, small to medium-sized enterprises just can't do it. They just don't have the time to do that. So who are some of the businesses that we're talking about? Well, um, in, uh, in the 100K context, and for those of you at home, I'm holding up a bottle of craft whiskey. A bottle of craft scotch like this is brought into this country in a container with about $200,000 worth of value. And the importer had the choice of using a letter of credit if he wanted to spend $4,000 in fees to the bank. And if he wanted to hire like a specialized trade professional to handle all the paperwork over the months that it takes. But as you can imagine where that punchline goes, they, he doesn't want to do that, right? That's a, that's a huge amount of resources for a small liquor importer. Um, and so his, his, he has two choices. He can either pay cash up front, $200,000, and then just cross his fingers and hope that the, that the whiskey gets sent, or he can just not do the deal at all, both of which are a tragedy for the guy, either high risk or he just misses out on a business opportunity. So if only he had access to letters of credit, he would use them, just like the Fortune 500 companies do. Income, XM chain. What do we do? We use the blockchain. As we all know, it's great. Um, the blockchain technology to, um, uh, to ease this process. It's the same technology that JP Morgan, NASDAQ, and others are using to settle stock trades, uh, securities. We're using that to settle import and export trades. Just the same tech, same smart contracting, different application. Um, and doing this sort of allows importers and exporters to deal with one another as peers, basically. No intermediaries, they collaboratively create the, do the trade documents, get style, um, and they come to an agreement and then, boom, 50% um, reduction in fees and massive reduction in complexity is definitely something that they would want to do. To bring it back to the whiskey guys, I, basically they would be ecstatic to be able to have the, the security and, and the convenience of a letter of credit but without having to pay letter of credit fees and, uh, and, and all the time and resources that it takes. So that's sort of our first target market. 
the so-called cash in advance market. It's about $5 billion. Um, our next market that we want to move into is heavy users of actual letter of credits. So remember in the beginning here, I said that banks make about $39 billion a year issuing these things. That's sort of our next market. There are a lot of commodity traders and that sort of thing. And finally though, after we're running a bunch of these transactions on our platform, the idea is that we would have started to gather so much transaction data on importers and exporters on our platform that we can start to build kind of like a, a credit history for these guys. Remember all the way back in the beginning, I said that importers and exporters need two key trade financing services, settlement and payment services, which is the letter of credit, and working capital financing, credit. But when you're an SME, like some random you know, importer or whatever, you are going to have a hard time getting credit. You're going to have a hard time getting a credit score. On our platform, if you run enough transactions and if you upload enough data, you could have a credit score that will give you access to global credit markets in the same way that you and I have access to a loan on Lending Club. We want to be the first lending marketplace for importers and exporters around the world. Yeah. If we can crack that nut, it's huge. It's a $2 trillion trade gap every single year for small and medium-sized enterprises. And that's us. That's our team. I'm Chris. I'm John. I'm Jamie. And we kick ass. Woo! <laughs> Thank you guys so much. Yeah. Damn. Okay, so that's tough. Okay, I mean, so people, let's know, like, try to knock them over. The best thing these people can get now is value. Yeah, helpful. hard <laughs> advice. Okay, so I'm thinking hard. I can't go first because I'm so, so happy. So, <laughs> we got great advice from Daza last week. So yeah. business question, export controls. How do you know you're not having someone export restricted technology? And you are there facilitating it. Great question. Well, See in jail. Sister. Yeah, today the banks don't really care about what's being transported. Yeah, it's, okay. it, it's all different. Like you have independent people, custom brokers. We'll deal so, with it. So basically, we will be we won't be creating the whole cycle again. We'll be using uh, people that banks will push in, right? That's we're just going to eliminate nice. banks. So the follow-up question on the same thing: What if both parties perform the way they're supposed to? The money's moving, the liquid's moving, and disaster strikes. And the ship sinks with all your great stuff. Who's capital is at risk? So well, that depends on what the uh, 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 both parties are doing. And income terms are basically tell at which point the uh, the ownership of goods transfer from the export to the importer. And if a certain income term is selected, that may mean that the uh, the importer is at risk. But if another term is selected, that may mean that the exporter is at risk. So long story short, it will be based on the contract with everyone that they form before us. But you as the one extending the credit, in some sense, being the bank, need to have some capital to back up. Because, of course, there's going to be you know, some resolution. It'll take time. And in the meantime, someone's not going to be paid. And they're going to come after you for that. Well, the lender would have made a creditworthiness assessment before they made the loan. And again, we're not actually the lender. Right. Just like a lending club, a hedge fund usually is the one making the loan. So they would have made an assessment based on the countries of origin, the goods involved, the credit history of both parties as to, as to whether that was a safe trade. Um, and then that's a risk that they build into their, to their loans. So okay. stay on it. So finish it though. Like, did he completely address it, really? I don't think you, so. You can do that. Yeah. <laughs> so can I just say, this would be the final thing if you just like did one full run. The one th between the two of us, we can tag team maybe. So I would say that that was a good way to answer it, which is you said, well, the way that this is structurally addressed within our business model because the party that assumes the risk is in us. That's a great answer. Um, but the thing that, the one little thing that you're missing is like, that's good. But I'd say if you wanted to make it great, it would be something where you, um, where even that risk, you because I think that you add data is the thing you didn't talk too much about for the second phase of getting into financing. And I think you actually, not only do you, none of it liability sticks to you, which is Steve's question, you had a good answer, but it's now, in fact, we, by, with the data that we can create within this marketplace of users, when enough buyers and sellers, importers, experts are using it, the, the people that finance them can have vastly better ways to um, model and control that risk and to overall make it so that the payouts are much lower and that the losses are much lower for the payouts from the reinsurers and that therefore the premiums lower and the overall transaction cost is even lower. Um, so I think that like that would be like, like number one, lawyerly, 
my client is not liable, my company is not liable, but it's like, okay, let's look at your overall effect in the ecosystem, and that would be like, go from like a B plus to an A plus. Yeah. Well, who is your next? Um, I got confused in terms of like, who's your customer? Because you put, you talked about a lot of different people in the, in the, in the pipeline for this and stuff, but um, who, who's going to write a check to you? Are they bank state, or are they your importer people, or who's, gonna, who's your customer? Yeah, we're going to be dealing with importers and exporters. Okay. So, it's a point we're trying to have. With, um, so, you're going to put the import export uh, records on the blockchain to cut out like all the paperwork stuff that goes on. I know a little bit about that because I've been reading up on it. You mentioned in your talk about all the banks and settlement guys and all that who pray, you know, they figure out, we all share the same blockchain. All this clearance is much, much simpler and faster because. You don't have all this crazy, right? So is that how your thing kind of works? If you have a bunch of import export guys that you're all on the same blockchain, and that way they're clearing like we shipped a thousand of this. Did you get a thousand of this? Yeah. So I, I think we, what we'll have is we'll have smart contracts basically uh, trigger the. Uh, basically, we'll have smart contracts that replicate a little bit. What that does, as Chris mentioned, is once the shipment is made, the money is sent. And that is how we plan. So what's verification? I, okay, so I, and that was my follow-up question, which is similar to what we said um, earlier in terms of what role does the theory of slash smart contracts have that makes this thing go, right? What's the secret sauce there that you know that you can only do because you have smart contracts that you couldn't do before? Yes. So it, is the question answered or no, it isn't. I'm sorry. Yeah, so let me no. just also do a second so, thing here. Uh, so you didn't say, so you first of all make him surmise that you have buyers and sellers, so I guess it must be them. But um, like you didn't answer the question of who's writing you a check. What is your business model? You might be looking to the buyers who are the ones with the money, but that's for you to say, and I couldn't necessarily answer that. I think you sort of said it once on the whiteboard, but I don't know the answer either. Well, so the idea is we're going to be charging a flat fee for the users of our platform. And that flat fee is going to be uh, 50 plus percent saving for them, but compared to what they're paying today. So that's the, where the money is going to come from. And that's like 1.0. And then when we have the data and when we can underwrite loans, then we get the principal and then we resell those loans. So, so I think that's got to be in your prison. Yeah, I agree. Right. So it's like the subscription model, like annual subscription? <laughs> We no, say it's, money or it's a transaction. It's this fee, uh, it's a flat fee on a transaction. Yeah, for oh, it's a transaction. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, okay, gotcha. that, uh, flat fee on transaction. And who, uh, to who, who pays the fee between, you have the buyer and the seller, I'm still not clear. It depends on the, on the agreement that buyers and sellers make. The thing about import-export is that it's a massively variated marketplace, right, where they come to all different kinds of terms. On our platform, it's going to be like a bunch of drop-down menus, but there's still not that many terms, right? When, when a, a typical letter of credit or bill of lading is only two or three pages, there's always a lot of standard terms. So essentially, it could be either of the two parties that is made to bear, or they could split the cost of our services. Oh, so it's part of the negotiation. Right? That's right. Gotcha. So, oh, that's great. So that, no, this is good, right? So basically, depending on how this works, I check out the box or the drop down. This is really kind of yeah. uh, populating or whatever a smart contract. Once mm -hmm. you have an understanding about what you're going to do, the smart contract goes into effect and verifies that this thing is going to happen, when it's verified, when payments happen, whether it's I pay, you pay, or we split the cost, right? So mm -hmm. you just tell them to got, got it, okay, got, I got it. Yeah. Cool, thanks. Yeah, uh, yeah uh, that's really good. I love what you said. I didn't realize, I don't know if you just made that up or you thought <laughs> it one time, but it never made it to the deck or something. But that, like, I agree with that last little bit there of like, well, oh, it's a very true. varied market. You don't necessarily want to carry forward the like, Medieval practices of like the ancient shipping peoples that are that we still sadly have. You could optimize it, but the way you would do the correct way to reduce that to something that you would want to implement in your system, I think, would be something along the lines of you have like default terms in a contract. So if like the whoever initiates it, which I think was the buyer, um, or whoever initiates it, they yeah. select. They have the opportunity to select a bunch of defaults. That's good. Like any lawyer would tell you, if you start with the first draft, you're feeling good, uh, and in it, you would have. I'm sure the other person paying the fee, or it may have them paying like you know like 60% of the fee so they don't balk or something. But then what you, what I don't think we saw here was they have a life cycle of like six key parts um, that we map to the blockchain interact to uh, smart contract interactions like the last weekend. There's a key part before you have funded a contract and it's going 
where um, all the parties agreed to all the final terms, and uh, this would be something that would be agreed prior to the funding of the contract, I believe. Right. Um, and so it's good to know where this fits in your model, and I think we're, the way that, if I just think documentary were like smart document management flows that are multi-party, it would be like, it starts with a template, and that would be auto-filled probably, or it could be like, this isn't done until we fill the term, but someone has to start. And then it has, like all other terms, like you've already said by design, that it's agreed before it's done. But I love the fact that you, that you said it's a negotiated term. It's like, awesome. Yeah. That's like a and, real innovation. And, and, and no doubt what you said, also you think of something which is related to your thing too, is like, um, how is the payment, do you agree on a currency ahead of time? If I'm in, if I, uh, from the buyer and I'm, in, I'm buying euros, but you're in, you know, somewhere else and you're shipping in dollars or whatever, how do we, do we agree it's all going to be in euros? Do we agree that it's going to be in dollars? Do we agree some third currency or how it's? Well, so yeah. ideally it's going to be on the wall. So basically, if you're buying, if you're paying in dollars, um, you we help you get bitcoins to an exchange. You pay in dollars, you get bitcoins. We hedge against that, and then whenever the oh, other oh, 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 yeah. so basically on the back end, like you were explaining earlier, I had to on, the, on the back end, oh, peace, dude. On the back end, the, the rails of our system basically is like you know all these bitcoin remittances businesses. We basically just copy that and use that as our back end. So whenever. Whenever an importer and an exporter are looking at our user interface, they don't know that there's Bitcoin back there. But whenever they say, oh yeah, $300,000 trade, they click a button. On the back end, there's a third party exchange that gets them into Bitcoin. Then that money is escrowed essentially in a multi signature contract, smart contract under, under all of the terms that were pre populated whenever they did all the drop down agreement stuff. And then whenever it's time for the contract to execute and the money to come back out, there's another third party exchange on the, on the importer or the exporter side, whichever. The, Anyway, whenever the money's got to pop back out again, and it goes to another third-party exchange in the currency of their choice or by pre-agreement. Gotcha. Okay. But every one of those is going to get fees. Yeah. 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 Of course. There's there's fees. Yeah. There are fees when it comes to in and out of Bitcoin, and, uh, and there's fees and risk and hedging. Right. So we're so those are both fees that we're passing on to, and we're passing plus these on to plus the plus hours. Yeah. Right. right. I just have a, I got an idea for you. Um, to create value for your customers, which is value for you, uh, which would be you could, one thing that everyone's going to be asking because of this question um, is, you know, what's the best way for, is, is it more, is it more cost efficient for us to all agree on euros up front, even though only three or five of the parties are euro, or is it more cost efficient for us to go through like basically three currencies before we're done? You could have a calculator that is exactly sure. tuned to the terms and then like actually says, well, our current projections are, it'll be like, end up being like, Two hundred fifty, you know, or like you know, five thousand dollars this way, or seven thousand that way. And they'd be like, "Oh, that's a great, great idea!" Yeah, you, you'll have all <laughs> the factors. And that's and that leads. Definitely you want to my, show. my question was like, what's your niche market when you start? Are you gonna start with this country and that country, this country and that country, okay. and then maybe you're, you're down to two currencies, maybe you're down to right. U.S. versus that's, euro? That is, you know what I'm saying? Not not sure. I missed that one. I yeah, totally agree. I usually have ideas. To uh, yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> yeah, that's a big one. But because because you have a whole eurozone, like there's tons of right. countries, and there are a lot of small businesses taking it in Europe. Mm -hmm. using leather goods, fine things. You know, mom and shop. They're pulling on Europe. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. And they, it's like you know, they have their own currency. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. they're pulling on Europe. Mm -hmm. And they, um, and then maybe their goods. Maybe it's Europe and China. Mm -hmm. But I think from a strategy mm -hmm. standpoint, start with two. Which which MVP, right? Because right. Right. your currency, you deal with. For the market, you work all, all that shit out. Right, know? right, right, right. Then right. you start opening up the doors to other currencies mm -hmm. in the countries. Yeah, right. Penetration point is sort of yeah, the way you do the analysis, right? Like, what's your penetration well, point? Well, and also yeah. because he said it's similar to the remittance business model, right? Which only works because we got flow going back and forth, right? Mm -hmm. I can yeah. use between pesos and dollars because I get the pesos going in, right? To pay for the pesos back, but to convert to the dollars that are going out, right? Mm -hmm. So that's how it's flow. Yeah. And you start with mm -hmm. less volatility too. Mm -hmm. right? If you, if you deal with the, with the currencies that have less volatility in them, mm -hmm. you have to catch less as really a startup good. business. You don't have to take that much risk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All that kind of stuff. So so right. Bitcoin yeah. is super volatile. That's why you need to hedge the Bitcoin, right? So because that can show up and down twenty percent one day. But look, so let's do one round of this before we let them go, because we're also in addition to critiquing, we're also helping each other. So um, one thing that I heard you say, which was great, was you said that you narrowed, I think there's two axes of, of, uh, of like uh, what will be my initial business. One of them you said, and I liked, which is you looked at all the different markets that you could do this for, and you said it was like 
wine and what like uh, yeah we've spoken to a lot of craft like, liquor makers craft essentially liquor. yeah so that's a marketplace where you want to start right right there's basically these guys are forced to just trust each other and use cash in advance Got which it. restricts a lot of their trade. so what that means is that we can actually not necessarily solve, almost certainly not solve it but we can do one round of this especially with Latasha's in the room actually she's looking from another country and you're in business when you've done you're a special resource right now you spotted the issue but yeah, to me I would follow up with you yeah, you should, but when I, as I'm looking at it, I'm thinking there's two axes, basically. And let's say this axis is like the market, and you've already kind of got that pretty well figured out. Like, I don't know, like, let's just say, like, you're doing this one, which is, uh, what do you call it again? Sorry? Wine and root. Wine. It's craft liquor. Craft liquor. Craft liquor. It's like yeah. quite narrow. Very narrow. Um, and like, you know, there's a lot of different segments here. Um, and then over here, we've got basically geo. You know, and so there's got to be a lot of, like, pairwise things. A lot's going from Europe to America. There's a lot going from... I don't really know actually the lanes very well, but now no, so a lot of the guys we've talked to actually are between Europe and America. There's a huge demand for American craft bourbon um, in right. in Europe right now, and then there's also likewise a huge demand for uh, interesting European spirits. I mean, this, you know, this whole like craft tipples oh, no, thing I'm is not, huge. I'm, 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 craft, I'm a craft beer aficionado, so I know right. the, the whole scene. Right, right, exactly. This is not a, This is actually just a matrix, I suppose. But like one of the things that would be interesting to do would be literally to like, so actually now that you're, you already kind of have this one, but the reason I'm suggesting doing it this way is for a roadmap, because you might see that, okay, we definitely do want to start this and we want to start like, it's actually China and they're not because they have the best, necessarily the biggest marketing, but like you can get in quick, if volatility has a price, you can basically do the analysis of mm -hmm. multiple vectors. Mm -hmm. But the most important thing for me for survival for you guys is not, how you do on craft, it's like how you do breaking into the second and third one, because mm -hmm. that's when you discover whether you have something that scales or not, and mm -hmm. you can learn a lot, and I imagine you can't guess right now. Mm -hmm. This can maybe help begin to think about what positioning, we know we're positioning for humongous crates of boots next, mm -hmm. or no, we know we're positioning for like tiny trinkets, and that's all gonna be Asia, which is why we really wanna start penetration Asia, and then we're gonna grow with the same people, mm -hmm. or whatever, I don't really know what it'll be, but I think this is the sort of thing that would be helpful. So I wanna ask Natasha, what do you think from what you, what the analysis you were just saying, the factors you were saying about the, like um, what do you when you're if you were doing this analysis and they hired you to basically um, like as a startup person or do a family chain or just help you with some business planning and roadmap, how would you approach this with them? How would you approach like the penetration point in the next markets? I would say that in like if I were to think about the risk, that probably is the first risk. <laughs> So, because the risk is what? The risk is in volatility of the currency, to, to, to my mind. So, the biggest risk to a startup is having to, you're, especially if you're already dealing with the digital currencies. I mean, US dollar to Euro is not that risky. I mean, although now with the current economy, who knows? But I would, like, I would, pick, I would pick two currencies that you know, like for example, you want right now is pick two dollar. Mm -hmm. So, there's not a lot of risk in trading those guys. Mm -hmm. Right, and so so if you if you think about that, that's going to give you a risk reduction. You start with a craft beer or craft liquor or some kind, of whatever, and then you know there's no risk in the currency, so you can go to more markets mm -hmm. between those two countries, those two currencies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That would be maybe uh, my plan. When yes. you big enough, when you say, well, wait a minute, you know, now I can take, you know, I can do a little bit more hedging, I can take a little bit more risk, but I can potentially get higher rewards, mm -hmm. now you can open up to additional markets. Mm -hmm. So I would maybe identify your first two markets in mm -hmm. terms of the continents or currencies almost, mm -hmm. and just stick to that because we eliminate the risk of, um, as a startup, I think I don't know how kind of funding you're going to get better. Right. I'm guessing you're still going to run a startup mode for a while until you can afford, because all you need is one, one uh, you know, tumble of a market and your company is wiped up. That's what I don't want to know. Mm -hmm. is, is that's why I don't want you to go into any, like, don't go to Brazil and Russia. Right mm -hmm. Like, restrict, avoid <laughs> breaks. Like, right, 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 Russia, right. I'm telling you, <laughs> so, but, but stick with something that you, you can, not worry about not worry it, it also, you know, a hedge is the kind of the same contract, right? That's what it's yeah. like. Because then you start with a, with a craft liquor, mm -hmm. then you go to beer, then you go to wine, that is very easy. And mm -hmm. there's still between those two currencies. Right. Get out. That was, hard. Oh, that was great. And yeah. how about his haircut? Did everyone see that? What? I, I didn't get a haircut. You didn't? <laughs> it's the same hair. Are you kidding? <laughs> it's the same hair. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm wearing my hair. 
All right, how about these contacts? They make you hear look different to me. Um, so actually, you can close it. Um, so can you sit down and get your hands on it? Oh, Natasha, and actually, Al, and everybody, everyone take your brain on this for one second. I want to see if you're really going to put the word that you're So what I derive from what Natasha's really good, when I was commenting, it wasn't because you're not good ideas, it was because, wow, that was a big idea that we all missed somehow, but to try to extract something usable from it, you were basically saying that when you're looking here, you first were like, think about the ball, tell me, and I don't you think so. Great, and I'll put it good. So risk and it's the exchange oh, yeah. risk rate of volatility that I think you're saying specific for risk, right? There's other risks as well. So what you're doing with risk, maybe you can mitigate right. other risks that might be a factor. I don't know what the other risks are happening either, right? The other one is like market size. So if you don't think someone's like, well, there's a lot of volatility between the euro and this compared to, I don't know, something else. But man, we really want to go from Mexico here because it's like huge market we can penetrate immediately. And the other part is um, not just overall market size, like 1% of the huge markets. Better than one percent of the tiny one, but then also the scalability here. So maybe in some places, like well, there's three big ass exports we have to deal with, like you know, like John Sally or Phil in like um, Scandinavia or something, and like we'll get like thirty percent, fifty percent, twenty percent. So it's like scale in the market. I think for me, it would be a huge factor. I was going to think about risk, and then the final thing was value of parties. So it's like it may be that in some of these things, you're going to take out a bunch of. Cost for some people, they may be ready to basically on the topic immediately. And in other ones, well, there's so much more, so much more volatility that you like you're not really saving as much, right? And like once you're really up and running, you have like a one-click adoption or something. That's one thing. But for people to start with you, right, it's going to be a journey to get there. And so you have to be saving them a lot of money or provide a lot of value. So I yeah. feel like, and those come in two flavors, right? So like if you have a bunch of buyers, I always like to buy. when I can work with huge buyers, I do it every time because it's a they have the money. And so like buyers can always drive the sellers along. Um, but the other people have sellers. So if you have a bunch of people that are selling and they like adopt your thing and they just let their partners know some portion will want to try it, and that's super legit too. So these would be the things I'm thinking. Then actually you're in business school. I no one ever accused me of being good at business. Is any comment of any on these? Am I saying the right things? Has this been sense? I just you're saying the right things, just like terminology. There's who has a buy, buying power. Mm -hmm. you, have a, you basically have a two sided market. Right, exactly. Uh, so yeah. just, uh, whoever has the bargaining power, money, is the one that wants to get the transaction. Yeah. Right, yeah. And that, of course, that changes. Um, uh, Per different type of transaction, but the way what I love about what you guys are saying is spot on. We absolutely do need to identify a one little section of that matrix or whatever, where all of those other factors are right, volatility, everything like that. But then also identify, say it's, let's say it is importers, okay, in China, and they have the buying power, right? Because it's a huge market. These are American yeah, exactly. So this way, they're going to say because they know that they're going to order a bunch of bourbons. Let's say, let's say that they're going to craft bourbons okay. in China. Boom. Then they're going to save a bunch of money on doing a bunch of those transactions, and then, and then in that in that case, the craft American exporters they will be forced to adapt. So yes, thank you for that. Okay, cool. And so thank you guys for all of your time. Um, like really well done, you guys. Excellent chain. Thank you. <laughs> Um, can you art? Can we keep this? No, you can't keep that. Give that to Jay. Can you bring that? Yeah, Really nice. This is awesome. Oh. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to put this in the refrigerator. Don't decide on next week. Oh, yeah. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Um, okay. So, next up, we have Bidding Wars. We need like robots in there somewhere. Um, and uh, we, uh, Bill. It, well, okay, so I don't think I have to say anything else. Do I? No, I don't. I shouldn't. So we should replicate. Okay, yeah, thanks. Well, I guess I'll just say one thing. Please note this, everybody. What um, Simon and Bill did, partly because of circumstances, because you know, Bill has other things to do, this life or whatever, um, is they, and also there's two people working on a team that have different schedules, is they both did videos. Um, and first thought, I thought was something maybe like Bill will slot Simon's video into it, or maybe at another point it was like maybe like Simon will slot Bill's video. So they like I think you put them to them together last night. Yes, you kind of have two videos. All they have to do on Thursday is sit down and click the button. That's it, and that's five full minutes of glorious demo that is completely quality controlled, second by second. Note this well, you people. Everybody note this. You can be like them and win on that.
Okay, Hennings, you're welcome. You earned it. So, uh, like Daza mentioned, uh, my partner Bill couldn't be here today, so we'll just show a five minute video plus or minus, and then we'll have a QA session. So, I'll start the video. That's sad. Where is it? The cursor should be up here. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's here. Hold on a second. Let me just. So, it's over here. Oh, okay. Good. Can people hear okay? Yes. Um, so keep, keep going so I can, so keep going just so I can get the sound going. Okay. Um, keep going. Particularly in places like Vancouver and Toronto. Okay, the, uh, the sound just changed. So keep going. It's not often you see a word like sleazy in the headline, that, but that's because people are questioning what's happening with bidding wars. Why? In one bidding war two years ago, 72 bids drove offers $600,000 over asking price in Toronto. That raises questions about phantom bids. Can blockchain enable transparency that would prevent home buyers from being manipulated or even bidding against themselves? If so, consumers could save billions of dollars annually. And as taxpayers who guarantee loans, we could avoid this worst case scenario. A replay of the Great Recession when one in four homes was. Where? Yeah, oh yeah, but we don't, we never touch that. Um, I just want to see if I can cause it to. Um, I, I want to cause the HDMI to pick up the volume. It's not transmitting it right now, and why? Who knows? Sometimes if you stop and start again, it's like the codec isn't. You might know it's computer yeah, stuff, right? Now. Like it just wasn't picking up because I I, I stopped it. You might have put it back in. Okay, now it is okay. So don't yeah. touch it. So I'm going to turn the volume up here. Good. Hold on. Wait. Hold on. Is that good? Is that good? Is that good? Okay. So now it's a little bit scared cursor here. This is definitely not good enough. This is too complicated. In an eight by two we're learning. So now we just click that, and then let's go all the way back. Yeah, we'll make it full screen. Let's make it full screen. Okay, here we go. Yeah, it should be okay. Nope. Well, I'm going to start again. No, no, I just... Uh, stop. stop the video. Yeah, Bidding wars. Bidding wars. Bidding wars. Bidding wars. Yeah. Okay. It's not often you see a word like squeezing, <coughs> but that's because people are questioning what's happening with bid wars. Why? In one day more two years ago, 72 bids for a long or $600,000 over asking price in Toronto. That raises questions about pending bids. Can blockchain enable transparency that would prevent home buyers from being manipulated or even bidding against themselves? If so, Consumers could save billions of dollars annually. And as taxpayers who guarantee loans, we could avoid this worst case scenario. A replay of the Great Recession when one in four homes was upside down in their mortgages. Unfortunately, there are signs we're experiencing irrational difference again. In fact, in some communities like Cambridge, the number of homes selling over asking price has risen tenfold. The definition of an overheated housing market 25 years ago. So in an age of transparency, why are there still blind bidding wars? If consumer protection laws require ingredients to be disposed on labels in grocery stores, can we create transparency so listing agents can't manipulate home buyers and, in some cases, create the public for themselves? That's good. That's good. If we do so, how can we get that solution into the market? The good news, as seen in this recent New York Times headline, is that industry regulators are already demanding more transparency. But why limit that to luxury home buyers? So here in Cambridge, one in four homes sold 100,000 over asking price during one month in 2014. And as a result, a generation of millennials, including MIT students, staff, and alumni, or at risk of becoming real estate refugees. Can we create a demonstration project, a bidding board map, and invite the public to participate? Clever. With that in mind, let's change gears and look quickly at different BLT layers, business, legal, and technology, from, for our proposed bidding board platform. Let's start with our one-page project description and underline the scale of the 
problem. At one point, regulators received a bidding war complaint of inquiry every 30 minutes in Toronto. Before diving into technical details, let's put our demo in the context of the home buying process. The home buying process unfolds over months, sometimes years. Most of the buzz about blockchain and real estate has focused on title issues near the end of the property transfer. Likewise, new truth and lending disclosures are designed to help consumers know before they go, but not until three days before completing the sale. Our goal is to add transparency and verification at the offer stage, where the sausage is made. So instead of focusing on no before you go, we're trying to protect consumers before they release their offer. Mm -hmm. The offer process can be viewed as four different stages where money is transferred from buyer to seller or from buyer to escrow agent. We're only going to look at the first two. I'm going to demonstrate Ethereum smart contract for real estate bidding written in Solidity and using Evercamp IDE. So the first I'm going to go ahead and instantiate a contract by choosing the romantic contract. Then I'm going to supply the sales address and see the startup of the auction. And now the contract is up and running. I can call on the methods. And the first one we're going to call is uh, place here. So I'll go ahead and choose the address of the dealer and the, the amount, which is a million dollars. <coughs> and I'm going to click place bid. And you can see that the highest bid is increased. And the bid amount is a million dollars. So now I'm going to place another bid using a different count for two million dollars. Wow. And you can see that the highest bid is increased once again. And the amount is now two million dollars. And now I'll attempt to place a lower bid of 1.5 million dollars. And in both place bid again, you can see that this time the bid is not accepted. The highest bid stays at two million dollars. And finally, I'm going to end the auction by invoking auction end and reveal the highest bidder, which is the address for supply for the two million dollars. Bang! All right. Okay, to beat him up. So two two things. The last part, I really like. That does a lot of the effort what I was asking you about for me. What? Seeing this last bit, yeah. where it's on Ethereum, there's a real contract, yeah. and there's a flow, yeah. and yes, there's no user interface. I know, but for me, that kind of gave legitimacy. I to agree. The I completely agree. So the purpose okay. of doing this, um, the purpose of doing this class actually was. I, I really feel that um, actually Simon and um, and uh, Bill, in some sense, they have a lot of projects. Um, so yes. they don't, they didn't do, you know, like other projects are, are even better at certain things. But what they did that I really care about is like I care about how do we innovate sometimes for me because I see a lot of projects and I, I'm just into it. Uh, and so they did what I was hoping for in this prototype thing was that we would certainly have business stuff and Bill brought it. We'd have some legal stuff and Bill brought that too. He listened and. Understood, and we had some of the right things that are happening legally, and we've been and technical in one coherent, holistic, um, integrated package. And so the technical part comes through with working code, and that talks better than anything. And it was in as part of the presentation, and they even did start to align some of the language because uh, in the last one they were using different words between the code and the, the lawn business. So to me, that was a major thing. I liked it that they they did that. You could do that too, and yeah. so could you. You're both using. Um, 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 the same stuff, actually. Right, right. So we could do. So, but the uh, but the other part on the business side for me, there were way too way too many slides, and they all were very full with text. Yeah. 
Yeah. I read nothing. I all yeah. I, my basically my sensory went all to listening because I did not follow anything. I was I, my eyes were seeing yes. nothing. It was all processed through listening. Yeah, very busy slides. I would rather you have three or five slides, but while you're talking and I'm looking and listening and looking. Same time, and I can actually process because yeah. I start reading something. There's tons of text, and then there's the next slide, right. and I'm like starting all over again. So that was the sense that I got. You're very helpful. So I'm probably responsible for that. Bill, uh, well, Bill is dead slide guy, but I told him to pour it on. And let me just say one thing here, and I'll tell you what my my recommendation is too. But my record, I think Bill achieved what I asked him to do, and now we can maybe do another version at some point for Thursday. What I asked him to do is something that is for people in the future who know who they are. Um, in your case, we're not exactly sure who you're going to be. We kind of generally know we haven't identified them literally. We know exactly who Bill's going to talk to. It's the um, real estate association that's coming to Boston in 2018. And so I actually have identified some of the, some of the big players and like we're going to bring that. I know like some of the communities, I know exactly who's going to be seeing this in the future. They don't know who exists yet. I don't care. Um, this is for them. And then when they see it, there certain things will occur that will culminate with a reception here at the Media Lab, and then we'll get things going. Um, so this industry is medieval, that won't do. Um, and so we're going to help them. And this is a message. <coughs> this is a time capsule. And they're going to do screenshots that I show to their staff. They're going to be ready when they come, and they're going to know what it looked like in 2016. And this is really, it's time capsule. Now that we've achieved that, that's his passion. What he wants, what Bill needs to be able to do, and that I think he's getting access to now, is he's been talking about this kind of stuff for many years. He has an opportunity for it to hit now, and that it's in that context. And so this is good. That's his, that's what it would be the ideal for him, is to reform the real estate industry. And so that's, therefore, I'm in the service of that. Now that he did that, now let's think about Thursday, actually, because I'm also in the service of that. We've been time Thursday, I'm not freaking everybody out with that slide deck. So I'm almost thinking like, Maybe we put this one on, like we you keep this at the top of your page, but for Thursday, maybe we do reduce it to like fewer slides, you know, and that's probably good to do. Um, so, yeah, I agree, five to six slides will be yeah, quite and, and I, yeah. I would also probably add that um, you, you can show, like, you can bring up a GUI wallet, right? You show a contract that executed this money in this account that there wasn't it for all that kind of stuff, right? You can probably don't, unless you're talking to developers, you don't want to show an IDE screenshot, right? That's probably not what you want to show. Okay, what do you but, show? Well, like I said, you can show the result of a transaction having taken place, right? You can show, like, in the in the GUI wallet that we have, which can also show some code and some really? Well, no one expects you, but, but, like, but I like it because, because what does it? I'm a lawyer, I get it. Yes, so that's not for you. And I'm not, and I'm not. No one's trying to read the code. Yeah, okay. No one's trying to read the code. All he's saying is, Oh, look at this cool idea that we're trying to get it. Last, and the letter is got all built into it. If you're talking about, and so people get the impression it's as though you put up slides saying, "Oh, this really exists." You know, but, but something's missing to Al's point, though. So there's a choice here, and it's a presentation choice, and you take a risk and you make a choice. But I think what's missing for the choice that you selected, which I tend to like as well, under the circumstances, because it's like a, you know, three-week prototyping class. Like, this is what we prototype, and there's why you're sending it out. And that's charming, I think. But what, what's missing is you didn't they characterize it correctly. So you just like went right into boom, IDE, and you started talking. So now that we've seen how it flows within five minutes, your part, maybe what we need to do is set it up better and say, this is our rapid prototype. And then you can actually say, it shows you the functions, and they actually say, like, this would be integrated to the user interface. Because actually, there's no context for this yet. Yes, yes. Yeah, yes, but, yes, they, yes, but, yes. but uh, Bill, so Bill's narration, which I don't know we can read record, is 3.5 minutes. Yeah. And I have two, so I have to shorten it even more. No, 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 can, can, can we all agree? Let me get here over here. I want to, I want to agree to make an exception. I think we should make an exception for Bill and Simon so that they get five and a half minutes. Because like to kind of force them to, they actually achieve what we really want, which is a video all done in advance. There's no risk. Everyone's not going to go more than five minutes. Let's face it. And so they, we know there, there's no risk, and they actually are two of them trying to work out those sort of thing. It's going to be hard for me to do deep edits at this point. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be unfair, but can we please agree to get in five and a half minutes? Yeah, I'm sure. Yes. Okay, hearing no objection, so you got it. You, you earned it. You. Um, and having said that, um, I. So there. Um, so still, look, if you come to Code for America tonight, at least help you caption it is another thing. So part of what's going on is that you can also put like 
continuous path of like this is fit. Like the, there's big points that jump yeah, in, yeah, yeah. and those didn't come through. But they were in bills like on storyboards. We can make them come through so that the cog would blow so that you can let the slides wash over you, but you see like the big fat, like, you know, title. Like phase one, save money for this person. Phase two, reduce, you know, like right. dogs okay. fighting and kids. I, and I'm and I'm not in this bit, but I, I still would want to see if it's a similar thread that's running through all of these right things. Mm -hmm. How do smart contracts enable something to happen that was not possible before, right? You're right. Right. Um, You're right. Because um, it's one thing to be kind of a little hand weavy with the IDE, look with code, trust us to do something, right? You know? um, but for especially to talk to real estate people, right? Yeah. We're tell them, right? This technology is essentially revolutionary for the real estate business, right? Yeah. And this is why, right? And here's how we're going to like you have that. Right. Uh, well, no, currently, no, not yeah. really. You do. Bill, Bill has it. Bill, like trust us that it is. Like yeah. will be saying it's why. Okay, I've heard it because I've sat with Bill a few times, and so like it's come up in part of like interrogation with right. Laura. Um, so we can, there is a good answer to that, and he has a very credible answer. Uh, at least in, I'm sure it's uh, in yeah, yeah, America, yeah. but Massachusetts yeah. for sure is a broker. Sure. I can tell you for sure. Well, it's 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 this as far as I can be. We were talking when we were doing like just yeah. some of the stuff that we had seen and experienced ourselves with the, with the class and everything and how that was all part of it. Um, it's a little preachy in yeah. the beginning, right? It is. It's a little preachy, and I get, I, politically, I agree with them 100%, you know, and I've seen a lot of uh, you know, damages and all that. However, I would just like be like, here's what happened, right? <laughs> right. Yep. Y'all know what kind of right. Right? problem. And, and say you're a problem, right? And um, to be able to say, here's how smart contracts could have alleviated that or stopped that from happening, or to, or to the extent that it did happen, right? Yep. Um, so that yep. in the future, because you know, we know that's that really it, important. It's really cyclical, right? We know that there's another one coming. Right? Dynamite, oh, that's really helpful. You know, what do you think? Are you presenting anything? Not yet. You know, I'm working on it. Are, are, you, are, you, are, you, I have harbor problems. That's yeah, you know, do you want to do narration uh, for this one? Do I want to let? Do you want to do narration? Because uh, <laughs> Bill wants your conference. So, so I want to show you this. Do you think it's right. something? So we don't have you currently scheduled that way. I know. Um, I'm working on it. Do you think you write So what you missed on the day when I did my little walk walkthrough was, um, you know, there's an issue with web development, right? You, know, you got to give all your codes and stuff to some guy who says, I want to So we got to wrap up now. Okay. Yeah, the reason I'm asking is just because um, if you're not. No, sorry. Then, don't wrap up on our account. I'm sorry. 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 i am sorry i uh, oh, panels. Sure. Okay, so why don't we say that you'll do that? Okay, okay so we have the second graduate. Um, we have Alex graduated from, because not only a student, so he's only a president. Uh, okay, so everybody, <laughs> that's that's a lab. Lab. Um, all right, so really good, you guys. And uh, so thank you, John. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. I'm an amazing teacher. Um, yeah, thank you all. Yes. Um, so we're going to. Hey, look what I got. Isn't that great? She, she, she can put me in here. Okay. Um, so we'll we'll see you all Thursday. If you want to see more dress rehearsals, tune in at like two o'clock um, Eastern time. But then the big show, show time for everybody all around the world and forever in the future starts five p.m. Eastern time this Thursday.